Well, hello, hello, hello. Looks like we are starting this live here today. And I am going to be speaking with two Paralympic champions on their experience uh, life after winning medals. So let's get this started. Actually, Arthur, you need to come here and um, click these buttons when the ladies come in. So I'm going to start out by announcing we're going to be speaking to a gold medalist and a bronze medalist. So Hannah is ready? So we're going to bring Hannah in. Is the mic on? I think there's getting feedback. Yep. Hannah, 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 you there, girl? There we go. Hi. Hey, what's up? How are you? Great. How are you? It's so nice to meet you. Yes, you as well. Oh, my God. I've been looking forward to this day forever and ever. Amen. Me too. Um. So excited. <laughs> so excited. Yeah. Um, okay. So before we get right into it, first of all, tell me how your holiday season was. It was wonderful. Thank you so much for asking. I got to spend a lot of time with my family. My brother lives in Texas now, so he wasn't able to come back for Thanksgiving, but he was back for Christmas. So right. we had everybody back under the same roof and had a great time. How was yours? Okay, so I got sick. Oh, God. Um, I got really sick and I got a COVID test. I took two COVID tests. They both came back negative. So I was non-COVID sick. Okay. So nobody seemed to care. They were like, oh, it ain't COVID, so you're good. Um, but still not fun. you know how it goes yes all right so last question before we bring Kim in um what was your new year's resolution oh gosh that's a good question I I haven't made any yet actually I I didn't make Ooh. any new year's resolutions girl come on I know. you're acting like you haven't been sitting around for two years in your apartment just waiting <laughs> <laughs> waiting for this moment for the world to open yeah <laughs> yes exactly all right well awesome. kim has joined us so i'm going to bring her in as well so here we uh, go the request went away uh, the request went away somewhere. all right kim if you're somewhere in the background send another request because your request went away um so while we wait for the request let's stick with hannah all right so hannah um you have won medals you are a Paralympian. You are a champion. Um, I don't know. Just how does that feel? It, it feels good. Uh, it feels weird sometimes. It doesn't really feel like it's real. Um, it's yeah. always nice after all of that craziness and the emotional highs and lows to come back and just, you know, be with your family, be with your people and just get back into normal everyday life. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing. Uh, normal, normal everyday life is not a thing, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> our new normal then the new normal the new normal thank you so much for the clarification so kim hey, how are you i'm doing well how are you i'm good so good to finally put a face to a handle <laughs> <laughs> likewise <laughs> awesome awesome okay so i gotta ask you the two questions i asked hannah a how was your holiday and b what was your new year's resolution Oh, gosh. Um, I had a wonderful holiday, and it was just really good to be home with my family, and everybody was there, which was really nice. And I also got to spend my birth, my parents' birthdays with them, and I don't always get to do that because usually I'm off training or traveling somewhere. So it was really nice to be, be there with family. And New Year's resolution. Um to just be happy and be happy with myself and <laughs> and find my own happiness and not rely on others to make me happy. Mm -hmm. I hear that. I hear that. That's real. Like yeah. that's, we're going to unpack that later. Um, mm -hmm. I want to thank you both for coming on to the live with me today. Um, <clears throat> I'm really excited. I am obsessed with the Paralympics. Um, I am like a jealous little like sneak wish I did it kind of girl. Like <laughs> as I watch the Paralympics, I'm like, I want to be them. And um, I love that feeling. Um, I love that feeling for the, dis you know, disability community 
um, because what you guys bring, what the what Paralympians bring, is the ability to see pride in disability, mm -hmm. um, and that's not something we get to see often. Um, and I don't know if you ladies know this, but after the 2016 Brazil Olympics, a lot more people registered as disabled um, in Brazil uh, because, you know, you were able to bring that pride to disability to allow people to want to, I guess, come out, I guess is a good way, um, as disabled. So um, I'm just going to toss out some questions and either of you can answer it or if both of y'all get like camera shy, I'm just going to force one of y'all to answer. <laughs> um, but honestly, just you know, that journey of deciding, you know what, I am going to be a beacon. I want to, you know, be at the forefront. I want to be a Paralympian. You know, there's a drive that comes with that. There's a drive in, in a world where a lot of people feel, you know, disenfranchised, especially when they're disabled, um, to have a drive like that. What motivates you to get out here and do that in the first place? You know, where does that drive come from? I've personally always been athletic and it was my brother who steered me towards being an athlete. And so I've, I've just by nature, I'm competitive and okay. I've always wanted to, I've always had that competitive drive and I've always wanted to be better than I already was. So having that inside of me keeps me going. Um, I don't wake up every morning having motivation <laughs> to do what I need to do, but it's, it's having the, the discipline and to be able to get up and do what I need to do. And honestly, I, in the beginning, I was doing it for myself and just because I wanted better for myself. But when I saw other little girls out there who are just like me, want to be just like me. And I was, you know, I'm doing this for you because mm -hmm. I never had anybody like you or anybody yes. like me to, you know, look up to. So I, I want to be that person for them and show them that they can do anything that they want to do. I love it. I love it. Before I toss it to you, Hannah, there's something I want to, you know, I know you're a, Kim, you're a, you're a runner, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just, I feel like that spirit of, you know, wanting to be better, wanting to, you know, get to your goals, um, wanting to, you know, I feel like that is definitely the spirit of a runner yeah. <laughs> because your whole thing is getting to your goal. Your whole thing is pushing and driving. Um, so I feel that, but also I think one of the really most important things is, definitely wanting to be that that role model that you never had exactly. um i hear that i feel that hand i want to toss that same question to you what gave you that drive that motivation to get into this yeah well, kim that was an amazing answer and i i totally agree <laughs> um i also have to shout out my brother i saw he just joined um I'm, i've always been a very competitive person um but i definitely wanted to follow my brother's footsteps and that's kind of how i got into swimming um, but, you know, like she said, at growing up, it was a very different world a couple of years ago, even um, just starting in Paralympic sport um, and the people that were there at the time, the mentors and the, the people to look up to. And, and like she said, especially now as we're continuing to grow the sport, just being able to be that person that you didn't have, you know, when you were first getting into it. Um, my first pair meet was when I was 10 years old and I was lucky to have uh, a lady there named Elizabeth Stone who I still love and adore and look up to and she really just took me under her wing and introduced me to the sport and got me into it. Um, and so now, you know, when you go to these meets and you see all these new kids and the next generation of Paralympics, that's where the motivation and the joy and the, the passion comes from, just seeing their energy and how excited they are and happy to be there. Um, and the Paralympic community is definitely a very close-knit one. It's somewhere that you'll yeah. always find that sense of belonging um, when you walk out on a pair of pool deck and it's still, it's overwhelming at times when you've been, you know, especially with COVID shutting stuff down and not being able to have those experiences. Um, coming back to my first pair meet after that was so amazing just because I had missed it so much, just walking out and feeling that, that unity on that pool deck. Even if you don't know everyone there, everyone's there for the same reasons, trying to prove what they can do and challenge themselves in whatever way that they can and chase their own dreams on their own path. And I think that's a really beautiful thing about the movement and why I'm so happy to be a part of it. I love that. And shout out to y'all brothers. Hell yeah. <laughs> yes. Look at these men supporting women. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> 
You know, I have, from what you said, you know, talking about, you know, just having a very supportive community. One thing that I found um, as a musician, so I work in the music industry and I found that there are not a lot of, well, in fact, I found that there are a lot of musicians with disabilities, like a lot of disabled musicians. But the problem is, is that there wasn't really um, a way for all musicians to come together and build community because things were so very sort of siloed. Um, and so I guess the question is this, you're in the Paralympics, you're finding this community, but before you join the Paralympics, how was it to be able to find other people with disabilities? Um, did you feel siloed? Um, did you feel like you were already in a community of people with disabilities and that encouraged you? Or was it not until you actually joined the Paralympics that you found community? That's a great question. Um, when I was growing up, I didn't really know many other people with disabilities. Um, I swam on able-bodied teams. I didn't know many people at school that had disabilities. Or like you said, it's interesting that you say that after uh, Brazil, I believe that more people in Brazil came out you know, as disabled and were owning up to that and were proud of that. Um, and I think that's amazing because mm -hmm. you know, just a couple of years ago, I don't know that that would have happened. And so, and one of the other interesting things is that I think you mentioned in a podcast recently that there are definitely visible and invisible disabilities. And so I think it's important to recognize both of those. Um, so I might have known people that just weren't as open with it, so who knows. Um, but I definitely found a community on able-bodied teams as well okay. um, and wanted to, you know, do everything that they were doing and uh, just be that and not necessarily be seen as different. And so it was always, it was very interesting to me joining the Paralympic community and being surrounded by people that were all different, all facing different challenges um, and just kind of finding my home there too. I love that answer. Um, I uh, and thank you so much for referencing that. You know, not all uh, disabilities are visible. Um, there are neurodiversities, even folks with deafness, and there are even folks who are uh, visually impaired uh, can come off as uh, not not having a disability. Um, even folks that are you know have mobility differences, uh, sometimes that they are not completely in a wheelchair at all times and they can also be partially uh, ambulatory and people need to recognize that that is also a thing kim i have a question for you though yes. so i'm on this mission to get people to want to just say disability say it it's fine um and but there's still resistance of people wanting to say differently abled or handicapped or other words to sort of uh, evade actually saying the word disability. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you feel about that? What, where does your empowerment come from as a woman with a disability? And, you know, what, what, what is your message to folks about language? I am not offended by anybody saying disability, albino, anything like that. And I encourage people to use those words because it's, I, it, it's what I am and I am proud to be disabled. I'm proud to be an albino. I'm proud to be blind, visually impaired, however you want to label me. Um, you are not going to offend me. So go ahead and use those, those describers because it's, it is what I am and I'm proud of it. And, um, I, I tend to laugh when people try to say, you know, use their other describers for us, but I'm just like, just say it like it is, go ahead and feel free to ask us any questions. Like you are not going to offend me by asking me, why do your eyes shake so much? Why do you turn your head when you try to look at things? Like I would much rather um, explain this and educate you versus you just making assumptions and just standing there gawking at me the whole time. So <laughs> I yeah. encourage it. Okay. First of all, Kim, you said something that I absolutely love. So when I talk to folks, when I kind of run around and do my sort of speeches at sort of a lot of these corporate places, they, they'll, they'll ask, what is the most important thing we need to know about people with disabilities. And I say ATP. I say, get out your pens and write down ATP. And everybody writes down ATP. And they go, what does that stand for? And I say, ask the person. Mm -hmm. Just ask. It's fine. The water's fine. Um, but before I toss it back to Hannah, Kim, I have another question for you. So in terms of accessibility, 
Mm -hmm. uh, that's definitely something that we have to struggle with as people with disabilities struggle or, you know, continue to assess and make sure that our needs are met. Um, in terms of the Paralympics, how has accessibility been handled? Now, I know that in recent times there have um, been some really great things that they've done, um, but then there's also been some friction in terms of bringing caregivers and things like that. So um, how has your uh, experience with accessibility in the Paralympics been? It's not perfect. <laughs> and I don't think it's ever going to be. Um, yes, uh, it can be handled better. Um, and I would like for it to be. And yeah, I may have experienced some rough times not being able to bring somebody to help me or be able to bring my dog to help me either. Um, but honestly, I'm glad that it's me because I feel that I am strong enough to go through this journey and be a voice also to help the ones coming in after me so they can get the accessibility, um, things that they need in order for them to travel in and feel safe in their surroundings. So, um, yeah, I would always like it to be better and I hope it gets better. I hope that I am heard in the things that I tell them. <laughs> and so we're, we're just hoping for positivity going forward. <laughs> Kim, you are very diplomatic. Um, <laughs> Hannah, let me give you that same question. I probably have a different perspective on that. I mean, at the same time, yes, it, it can always be better. <laughs> we can always hope to improve. And like you said, hopefully make it better for the next generation coming in um, and, and, you know, going through those different challenges and experiences and using that uh, moving forward to push, push the movement and push for more um, accessibility. I have been okay <laughs> on most of my experiences, um, but I know that there are definitely, I've had teammates that have had uh, other other needs that were different than mine. Um, everyone on our team is so so incredibly different on every trip that we go on, and um, we've always had very supportive staff that's done their absolute best to accommodate everyone and make sure that everyone is very safe and taken care of in every way possible. Um, so I think moving forward, we're just going to continue to learn from those different experiences, and there's always going to be different people on the team, and we're going to have to uh, continue to adapt. Um, and that flexibility is super important, I think. Um, so moving forward, we'll just keep learning, keep growing, and uh, hopefully, you know, keep making it better for the people that come in after us. Nice, nice. I love it. Okay, Hannah, here's a here's a fun question for you. It's a trick question. Um, <clears throat> turns out you're also female and uh, you're in sports. So that is a whole other thing. One, something that a lot of folks don't recognize is that disability is intersectional. Uh, people that have disabilities are not just a disabled person. You can be a disabled woman. You can be a disabled black person. You can be a disabled LGBTQ identifier. Um, and not only are you a disabled woman, but you're a disabled woman in sports. Ah, scary. So um, tell me how your experience has been as a woman intersectionalized with disability in sports, in, in your races, in the Paralympics, or just in life as, a, as, a, as, a, as an athletic woman with a disability? Um, I've always felt very supportive. I, I haven't run into a whole lot of negative <laughs> things with that. Um, I, I love teams where the men and women's teams are very close. Um, I'm at Queens University in Charlotte and the whole team here is just very unified in one you know, big happy family. And obviously we, we have our differences and we do things separate sometimes, but on most yeah. of the teams and most of the experiences that I've had, um, they've been very positive as far as integrating men and women together, training together, working together towards the same goals and just working um, as one unit. And I think that's a really beautiful thing to see because, um, you know, as as I'm sure you guys may have experienced it, it doesn't always go that way. Um, yeah. Like you said, and so I think um, treating, you know, men and women equal in sports is obviously an amazing thing to see. And I, I've been very lucky to have positive experiences with that. Well, that is very encouraging to hear. Um, I want to toss that same question to you, Kim. Um, turns out you are also intersectionalized. So um, please speak to your intersectional experience, especially as, um, especially as an athletic person. Yeah, so a little bit different for me. It, I think 
And I could really see the differences in college and um, how there was, I, you know, I trained with able body athletes and um, I was on my college team and there was a, an athlete on the Olympic side who made it to trials and I mean, didn't quite make it, but you know, they were raving about the fact that he made it to trials and then I made it to trials also for the Paralympics. Nothing was said. I made it to the Paralympics. Nothing was said. I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a medal and a little bit was said, but it wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. it, so there is a difference and I'm unhappy with it very much so. And I have voiced a little bit about how it needs to change and I probably need to do better, but about voicing that things need to be more equal for the both of us. But um, <laughs> it's definitely a, a topic that needs to be talked about more, that women are athletes and we are disabled and we are great too. And we need to be um, what's the word I'm trying to say? Um, Elevated as well. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I am feeling it. Uh, I mean, you're very passionate and you're very, you know, here for it. And um, I hear you for sure. And uh, I do agree. There's always, I mean, while great things are happening, there's always room for improvement. And um, I got to say, though, the Paralympics is just such a great place for folks with disabilities to look and point at and go and just easily go, wow, that is amazing. Uh, I feel encouraged or I feel inspired. So I'm really excited about that. Um, Y'all busy as hell. <laughs> so I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, I'm going to ask y'all a closing question. Um, but before I do, the, I do want to say one quick little thing. Um, anyone watching this, my name is Lachi, lachimusic.com, at Lachi Music, L-A-C-H-I-M-U-S-I-C. I'm here with two gorgeous, amazing Paralympians, and uh, I have their self-describes and uh, their handles in the description at the bottom, so definitely check them out. They're amazing, as you can see. Uh, one thing I want to ask, challenge the two of you with, um, is that I noticed that both of you said able-bodied when referring to people who weren't disabled. Um, but I will say that there's been a little bit of pushback within the disability justice community about using the term able-bodied uh, because there are people with disabilities who are literally able-bodied. Frankly, I would consider y'all both able-bodied because y'all assholes can swim and freaking run laps around my ass. Um, ooh, I think this is family friendly. I'm sorry, I'll bleep that out later. But what I'm trying to say is um, we're trying to encourage folks to say non-disabled instead of able-bodied. So I just want to challenge y'all folks to try to, you know, throw that into your card of uh, your lexicon and uh, encourage other folks to do the same. So my closing question for each of you is um, for the young, you know, I'm sure y'all get this all the time on all y'all little interviews, before the young disabled girl that sees you on TV or sees you online and wants to be you and is feeling unseen, is feeling unheard, and is feeling alone and siloed and doesn't know what to do, but sees you, what advice do you have for her? Um, I'm going to start with you, Hannah. I would just say don't be afraid to advocate for yourself. You are a strong, powerful girl, woman man, boy, whatever you are, you are very strong and powerful and deserve to be recognized and heard. So don't be afraid to use your voice because everyone does have one. Um, mm -hmm. And have that confidence. That confidence comes from within. You know, people surround yourself with support, surround yourself with loved ones, people that are going to help you on that journey. And, you know, you'll all be there for each other. And just don't be afraid to chase after your dreams. As cliche as it sounds, everyone's on their own path, but just go after it and don't let anything stop you. Because um, everyone's facing their own unique set of challenges, whether you're disabled or non-disabled, you know, everyone has their, their challenges to overcome, but don't let that stop you. Keep driving, keep pushing forward, and definitely speak up and uh, help educate other people too. 
I love that. And I saw you sneak in the word non-disabled. You get five points, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, how about you? What do you have to say to the young little mamas watching you right now? Oh, um, gosh. Hannah did such a good job, and she kind of stole my answer. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but, I mean, I just want to reiterate that don't be afraid to follow your dreams. And at some points, it will get hard, and it's okay. And just know that you are strong enough to overcome anything. As long as you dream hard enough, you can achieve it. And anything is possible. And just be strong. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I want to thank you both for joining me today on uh, this call. Um, you are medalist winners. You are articulate. You are gorgeous. You are accomplished. And I just love surrounding myself with dope ass people. So <laughs> thank you so much for coming here. Um, and we'll be sharing this um, on my Instagram, on my Facebook. We'll also be uh, pushing this uh, to other platforms. And I want to thank you so much for joining me. Everyone, please check these ladies out. They are bad asses and they are really ruling the world. And I also want to encourage folks to check out the Paralympics period and find other people that you can definitely follow and, and be inspired by. So thank you ladies so much. And um, I don't know, I'm going to be in y'all DMs. <laughs> thank you so much. For having us this week. Oh, awesome. You. Well, you ladies have a great night and um, we'll be in touch. All right. Take Sounds care. Good. Bye.